Welcome to the Be Empowered Podcast with your host, Graham Hopkins. My goal is to help you regain your power by bridging the gap between who you think you are right now and who you really are. In simple language, that is like making your childhood dreams come true. This is for those who want to make an impact in their lives but don't know how to get there. Be insured. When you know and feel connected to your spiritual mind, you master your world. So welcome everyone to Be Empowered show. Or for our guest today, it might be better for me to say, good morning ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is your captain speaking. Because that's exactly how Ron and I met. We met on an aeroplane on a flight between uh, Dubai and Mauritius and a um, set of circumstances which I would call synchronicity happened that led me to meeting our guest Ron Kaufman. So welcome Ron. Thank you Graham, it's a pleasure to reconnect with you here. Yeah, I, I, I just want to tell everybody this story because in my uh, book that I published uh, just a few months ago, Ron, <clears throat> the first question I posed was uh, in that book which is um, called um, The Manifesto of Your Inspirational Mind. I posed this question, do you believe in synchronicity? And I want to explain this to you because you don't know this story, but um, on that, f well, preceding that flight, uh, my wife and Susanna and myself went to the Seychelles and we stayed on uh, Preslin Island in the Seychelles and the service was unbelievable. Honestly, I didn't think this type of service uh, existed anymore. And we went to this, um, we went to this resort and when we arrived, the manager of, of the uh, resort came and welcomed us. Uh, we then went into the resort and just about everybody that we had one-to-one -one contact with us remembered our names right throughout the four days. And then when we left, the manager came and he gave me this huge book. I don't know if you can see that. It's the story of the, the Constance Group. Yes. And you, you obviously know them because I know you do a lot of work in uh, Mauritius and that's yeah. where they're based. That's right. Now, <clears throat> there's something that really uh, hit home to me during that time that we were at that resort. Their motto is inspired by action, uh, inspired by passion, sorry. Passion. And it was really that um, holiday that really started inspiring me to create value for people uh, in this whole realm of serving people and that's basically led to um, this interview with you which is um, during our first week of launching uh, the Be Empowered show on iTunes. Well I'm honoured to be one of your first guests Graham. Yeah, well the amazing thing is the very next trip I did was the flight you were on. Yes. So we were travelling down, and I, I, a lot of our guests probably don't know where Mauritius is, but it's it's the Seychelles is pretty much in line with uh, between Dubai and Mauritius. So we go right smack bang over the island that I was staying on. So I called a few of the crew up, and I'm telling the story about the service at this place, and a, a lot of them know because. Uh, uh, we, we actually get a discount there, so a lot of the crew go there. So I was telling them how good it was and we were looking down watching uh, the uh, resort go under the nose and the purser said to me, she said, oh, we, have a, we have a guy on board today, first class passenger, um, his name's Ron Kaufman and I, I think from what I remember they went and you gave them a copy of your book which is I just want to show you that. Is that right? Yep, it's the right, right way around. 
That's so right. That's, it's called uplifting service. Amazing. And on that, uh, somewhere on that book cover, it read like this. It says, Ron is known as the world's leading educator and motivator for uplifting customer service and building service cultures. Yes. And that is just an amazing story. You know, that I, I just see so much synchronicity in that, Ron, that uh, uh, it kind of staggers me, to be honest. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it funny, Graham, that we're still staggered by synchronicity when, in fact, all of life is happening connected to each other at the same time. Synchronicity is what's going on. It's just that we're becoming more open to and more aware of it. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And so, Ron, I know that um, you speak all over the world about service. You are involved in um, the culture. In fact, the whole culture of the country in Singapore revolves around your teaching. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your history with uh, service, how you got into it maybe, sure. and then leading through your time. I believe you're based in Singapore now and, and yeah. you have a lot of input into that, not into that country, but also Singapore Airlines. Yes, yes. I've been based here in Singapore now for the past 24 years. And the story of how I got here is actually in the beginning part of that book that you were just holding up. Uh, it actually started with my grandmother. She taught kindergarten for 40 years in New York City. And so to her, every single person was absolutely precious. And so when I was just a little boy, even five years old, I, I used to get to go to her kindergarten and I watched this amazing grandmother of mine make everybody feel good. And she did it all day long and she did it for the parents when they came to pick up their kids. And I, you know, I really watched that as a role model and I said, wow, she's so nice, she's so good, people love her so much. And, and what she was doing was service. But she didn't call it service, she called it love. And then as I grew up and I went to college and I got very involved in a sport called Ultimate Frisbee. And in Ultimate Frisbee, I was the captain of the team at Brown University. And it's a, it's a fascinating game, I'm sure many of your viewers have heard about it. But one of the most interesting things is there are no referees, which means that the players themselves must take responsibility for discussing, agreeing, adjudicating, resolving whatever happens on the field. And that's possible because the very first rule of the game in Ultimate Frisbee is called the spirit of the game. In other words, the spirit of the game is to play. And yes, you can compete, you can want to win, but the spirit of the game is to play together. And so I got from my grandmother the idea of love, and then I got from Frisbee the idea of play. And then when I got involved in corporate work as I got older, I realized that adults are also want to enjoy themselves. Adults also want to learn. They want to be able to engage with other people. And if we can all do it in an upbeat and uplifting mood, you know, it makes everything else more possible. Back in 1990, when the country of Singapore invited me here, it's because they had a problem. All the manufacturing was going to China, all the back office processing was going to India, and the economy of the country was going to be hollowed out. So they looked forward into the future and they could see that Singapore's future was going to be based on service. So today, financial service, legal service, educational service, medical service, convention service, it's a service city. The population, however, had not been educated to really respond and be flexible and you know, be proactive with customers, they'd been trained to go to work in factories. So back in 1990, the government realized we have to literally re-educate the entire country about what does it mean to be in service to someone else. Now, Singapore Airlines was already a fabulous case study of excellent service because for the airline, from day one, they were already competing internationally. Singapore is so small, there are no domestic flights. And so they had to achieve a very high standard right from the beginning of the airline, and they've done so ever since. And I've simply been privileged to be one of the people who's been able to help contribute to their ongoing success. That's great. It, it's, it's, a, it's a really amazing story that you're tying service together with um, seeing the goodness in somebody. Because well, um, I don't... I do uh, quite a lot of coaching, and basically what that coaching is, it's 
It's just enabling or helping people to see their own goodness and connecting with that. And that's it. It's really that simple. Well, to see it, to believe in it, to recognize that it has a purpose, and then to put it into action. Because exactly. the action that any one of us can do in this world will necessarily touch other people. In yeah. fact, being alive is, is something that requires engaging with other people. And so yeah. to me, service is the thing that ties all of us together here on the planet. Whether we're being served or we're serving others, it's the language that keeps everything connected. Well, that, what you're talking about there is now proven um, scientifically. You know, they, they know that the, you know, the neocortex, that's the thinking brain, and then the middle brain is the limbic brain, that's the feeling brain. But then the third brain, right at the back here, that's where it's kind of uh, becomes uh, second nature to us, and that is done through action. So it has to go from thinking to feeling to action. To action, right. And, and Graham, the definition of service that readers can find in the book, and I think you would found it already, is service is taking action to create value for someone else. So the whole idea that our brains are designed, our lives are designed to be in action, well, what's the purpose of the action? It's to serve other people. When I read that uh, definition of service that you have in your book, uh, I said, to myself, I've got to have Ron on because it's it's so uh, synchronized to to you know what uh, the message that I'm conveying on uh, on how people can empower themselves basically. Right. So, Ron, what is it that um, inspired you to get involved with the Singapore government? And I mean, that's a long time ago now, and, and I mean. Singapore is known as a service community all over the world, so you've been really the backbone behind that. Well, uh, thank you for the compliment, Graham. I'm one of many, many people who have been able to make a contribution. And I continue to make a contribution. I, in fact, I was just in conversation recently with the Civil Service College. The entire government of the country of Singapore has more than a hundred thousand employees and they're constantly looking at how to raise service levels for citizens, for visitors, for employers and I have the privilege of being able to work with them on their service improvement projects. Um, you know Singapore is an interesting place. It's an island. It's multi-ethnic. It's multi-religious. It's multi-racial and yet it gets along and it gets along very well with everybody inside. It's in a neighborhood surrounded by some very large countries like Malaysia and Indonesia and sometimes you know relations in the neighborhood of ASEAN or Asia Pacific can be a little bit tense so here's this tiny little country called Singapore that is surrounded by so much act activity that's going on and what do they need? They need friends. They need to be helpful to other countries. They need to be valuable to other people in other parts of the world even to make a living because there's no agriculture here, it's too small, there's no oil reserves here, it's too small and yet the country has thrived and it's done very well by focusing on how to create more value for the neighbors, for other industries, for customers in other parts of the world, for tourists when they come to visit and so the role model that Singapore is to me is it's like a small iconic case study of what we should be doing on the whole planet because the whole planet is multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multi-racial, and we need to get along. Hmm. That's good. Ron, is, 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 there an, is there an order to it? Because I, I read uh, somewhere in your material is that you say focus your attention on other people first, then take action to create value. What's, what's the significance of that? Well, you know, some people walk around in life with a, a, a question in their mind which is what's in it for me? You know, how do I get more? How do I make more? How do I get what I want? And, and there's a lot of advertising that encourages that point of view but there's another way of living which is to actually be in the world not focused on what's in it for me but meeting people and thinking to yourself what can I do for you? How can I help? How can I assist? How can I support? Now here's the interesting reason why I think it makes sense to put that first. Because when you make the choice to do something beneficial for someone else, 
the moment you make that choice, your own energy level goes up. Your own personal power, if you will, goes up. Because you're focusing on someone else's needs, someone's concerns, and you need energy for that. You need creativity for that. You need some passion for that. And so those things arise in your own body, in your own being. Your brain switches into gear, which means that you're actually getting a benefit even before the other person that you're going to serve starts to experience the positive results. So I say to people, you know, if you're feeling selfish or you want to get more for yourself, just go out and do something nice for someone else because the first person who'll get the benefit will actually be you. Mm. How do you find this message goes down in a, in a world that is so egotistical and so selfish, so self-centered? Well, that's a, very good, that's a very good question, Graham. When I'm teaching, as you know I do with client organizations all over the world, and it's in every industry, and, and our material is now in 15 different languages, and you know, normally by the time we get called in, it's to a company that has at least 1,000 employees. They've been doing customer service training for years, but it isn't really producing a sustainable positive result. And so they find us, and what we specialize in is helping an organization build a culture of uplifting service, where the service inside the company is as good as the service we provide outside the company, and both of them are getting stronger and stronger. But this particular point of view about not doing what's in it for me, but instead doing what can I do for you, I only introduce that at the very end of the program. Because, because before you get to the point where you want to ask people to make that fundamental shift in way of thinking or way of being, there's some other education that needs to occur. Very, very few people have reached adulthood and have ever taken a good class or a good course on the fundamental principles of service. Unfortunately, it's not taught in our school system, and it should be, to children. It's hardly ever addressed in the university system, except for MBAs in the area of services marketing. But we're all in professional lives serving each other and don't even have the fundamental principles. So I always start the day by teaching the fundamental principles of service and then building on top of that an understanding of how do you build a culture of service and then at the end of the day we can say, you know, this really comes down to a personal decision. What's in it for me or what can I do for you? Hmm. So, so what is it that really shifts somebody? You know, like when you're talking to a large group, What's, what's kind of the, the key that, that makes, the, uh, makes it tilt in favor yeah. of um, doing things for other people? Right. That's a good question. It really goes back to the definition that I shared with you earlier, which is service is taking action to create value for someone else. And I always say the most important part of that simple sentence is not the action you take. It's the someone else that you're serving. Because if you want to be successful, you have to start with someone else, figure out what it is that they value, then you can decide on the action that you're going to take on their behalf. right? So the focus needs to be other-focused from the very beginning if you're going to succeed in service. Hmm. You know, one, one of the things that we have in common is we spend an awful lot of time in traveling in an airplane. Yeah. And, uh, I travel all over the world, I eat at all types of restaurants, and one of the things that really, really annoys me is this kind of um, performance orientation with mm. service. You mm. know, so, so you sit down for a meal and, and, and you just get the feeling they're waiting for you to finish, and sometimes, you know, you'll get up to get a bit more breakfast and you come back and your plate's gone. <laughs> you ever experienced that? Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, See, you, people, you finish eating, people get you trained. Eating. People get trained, Graham, in procedures. Yeah. They get trained in process and in checklists. Certainly, as a pilot, you understand the importance of that. And as a pilot, let me be clear: when you when you're flying and I'm your passenger, I don't really want Graham Hopkins to exercise a lot of creative thinking. Yeah. Okay. I, I want you to do what it is that is in the procedure because it's there for a good reason. But when you have a, a service situation, like let's say you're flying and there's turbulence, or let's say you're on the ground and there is an aircraft delay, or let's say you've landed but you can't get to the gate yet, you know, you could just follow procedure and say, ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. Or ladies and gentlemen, we have to wait another 10 minutes. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it'll be another 15 minutes before we get to the gate. And that would adequately follow procedure, but it would not be good service. Because what you really want to do instead is think about who is the someone else on my aircraft, or in the case of the waiter, who is that someone else that's having breakfast? And mm -hmm. what can I do? What can I say? How can I make contact with that person in a way that they will appreciate and value? Mm. Well, you know, coming back to your statement about a pilot, it, what I believe the difference between a good pilot and the average pilot is creativity. Because, you know, it's, it's not something the passengers see, but uh, a, a creative thinker is always looking ahead. Yep. Um, yep. You know, for instance, let's take a simple case. You know, you could be, you could be, um, you could have another aircraft passing a thousand foot overhead, and you look down and you notice there's no wind. This is a typical scenario to get pick up weight turbulence. So if you've got a A380 going over the top and you've got four big engines creating that turbulence that's going to sink down and hit your aircraft, then you're going to have the seatbelt sign on before it even happens. Correct. So Correct. even though even though we stay within the bounds of the rules that are in place, uh, still creativity uh, is what um, makes somebody stand out. Right, right. And you know, if you if you really wanted to get creative, you could even say to people, uh, assuming it's not nighttime and they're sleeping, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, this is the captain. You'll notice that I've put on the seatbelt sign. We have one of our beautiful Emirates Airbus A380s that will be passing overhead shortly in the appropriate distance, but you may feel a little bit of turbulence coming from that, and I just want to make sure that you're all safe and sound. You know, I've never had a pilot say that, and I think that, you know, the passengers would say, this is amazing. Wow, I, you know, I, I'm more aware of the fact that I'm flying and what it is that's going on. The reason we don't make uh, PAs like that is because of the three classes, and a lot of the first class passengers are asleep. So, uh, ah, well, there you go. There you go. That's <laughs> that's the reason. Yeah. But understood. getting back to what I was saying, creativity is also the the key to service, whether it be in a restaurant or anywhere else. I I would imagine. Uh, can you add to that? Well, creativity is where you really have the opportunity to do the value added. So if you take a waiter, for example, who is well-trained and is going to follow the procedure you know, of bringing people to the table, presenting the menu, taking the orders, delivering the food, clearing the plate, collecting the money, I mean, it's very procedural, yeah? But if the waiter takes the time to find out who is that particular customer, then he might learn that actually it's two people negotiating a contract and they would like a quiet table. But then the very next person may come in and it's a tourist and they want to know about everything and they want to talk to the waiter and they want interaction. You could have a couple that comes in and they're on a date and then as the waiter, how can you serve them so they feel good about each other, right? You can use your creativity to make that happen. What if the next customer comes in and it's a mother with a young child? So if the waiter just follows the procedure with no creativity, you're very likely to have four different customers who, well, they got served, but none of them would say it was great service. But if the waiter is more creative about understanding who is that someone else and what action can I take that will create value for them, then you can have a real win-win with additional service value add. Mm. And Ron, tell me about, because I know you spend a lot of time down in Mauritius, what, what uh, is it you do down there? Well, thanks for asking. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a very large hospitality firm there called, uh, used to be called Nyad Resorts, and it was about three and a half star, and they rebranded to a completely new name called Lux, Lux Resorts. And, you know, they repainted and they got a new logo, but they had to get the service from three and a half to five star and keep it there. And so they used our Up Your Service education program and culture building program, and they're now very successfully at five star with very high room rates and very high occupancy and, and you know, an impeccable TripAdvisor score and very high rankings in the tour operator world. Another group that we've been working with in Mauritius is the National Airline. So Air Mauritius used to be rated as a three-star airline, and there are a hundred 
and 47 airlines in the world, Graham, that are rated three star. And they decided to take on the challenge of becoming a four star airline in 24 months. And they brought us in and they use our educational program and our culture building activities for the entire company, 2,500 people. And I was there on my most recent trip because Skytrax has just awarded Air Mauritius four star ranking. So they're now right up there with Etihad and with Emirates, which is also considered a four star airline. Although I will say that I'm counting on Emirates to reach five star sometime very soon. Excellent. Um, just one thing I noticed was that the resort that I mentioned that we stayed in is the Constant Group, and that's yeah. also delicious. So my question is, what is it in the water down there that uh, you guys are drinking? I don't know about the water, but I can tell you that the head of the entire Constance Group learning and development function was actually in my program in Mauritius just two days ago, and it was a delight to meet them. You know, I think it's not so much what's in the water, but let's look at what's in the people. Mm. So the country of Mauritius is another island, multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-religious, and yet they get along. So their success is about creating value together as a community, but then also with all of the people who come to visit them. So they have a very large uh, uh, port industry there where you get large cruise ships coming in, and of course hospitality is a big industry, and also now financial trust and legal services has become much larger in the country of Mauritius. It's a wonderful story. Um, Ron, you make this statement, service is the currency that keeps the world together. That's right. Can you tell me more about that? That sounds like a, an interesting statement. Well, it actually says service is the currency that keeps the economy moving. Okay. I, serve you, I serve you in one capacity, you serve me in another. When either of us gets better, the amount of value goes up. When both of us get better, then there's tremendous value added. When everybody steps up to deliver a higher level of service, then the whole world functions more smoothly and more effectively for us all. Excellent. And, and really, that's what I'm endeavouring to do with this. It's, right. um, it, it's a show to bring people on who uh, can express what they're doing to add value to other people. That's basically and what I, I just want to say something to you, Graham, to acknowledge and congratulate you about this as we wrap up our call. You know, the Be Empowered group, you're taking a stand. You're making a commitment that says that each and every person who's watching this interview or that learns about you or gets a copy of your great book, I mean, you have the opportunity, but you also have the responsibility to participate in the world, to contribute in the world that makes the world a better place. I mean, we all know from reading the newspaper and looking at the media that this is a challenging time for the planet, whether it's climate change, whether it's political conflict, you know, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that you can just sit and watch the news and go, oh, what a terrible world. Because the way each and every person lives their lives does make a difference. It may not make a huge difference, but it makes a difference to someone, to the other people that you're in touch with in your life. So if you're watching this interview, thank you for taking responsibility and living up to your potential. Be empowered. Yeah, that's excellent. Ron, before we wrap it up, there's, you put out a blog that I want to just touch on briefly. You, you say there's a difference between empathy and compassion. Can you just expand on that just briefly? Yeah, I think genuine empathy means that you really understand what's going on for another person. You understand the background, you can understand their culture, their situation, their feelings, how they got that way, what they're concerned about, what they want. I mean that's real empathy when you fully understand another person. But that's extremely rare. It's very difficult to actually get empathy at that level of understanding because we're so different. We come from different backgrounds, we have different issues and concerns. But compassion is something that any human being can show to any other being at any time whether or not you actually understand their situation. So to say that you know I aim for absolute empathy with other people, that's, that's an impossible to achieve. But if I say I'm committed to exercising compassion in the world, then there's nobody who I couldn't care about. There is nobody that I couldn't 
uh, take take an action to let them know that they matter to me and and how they feel matters and and then I'm willing to do something to help them. Excellent, Ron. I don't know how to thank you for. I mean, you're speaking to thousands at one time. And you've taken the time to speak to little old me just to kick off my show. Uh, well, on I, don't, I don't think. I don't think of you as little old you, Graham. I think of you as great big you because you are empowered. <laughs> I really appreciate it, Ron. Um, can, can you just uh, give a, a wrap up on where people can buy your book, sure. which is, well, sure. I showed you before, um, Uplifting Service, and uh, where people can contact you, businesses if they're interested in contacting you? Well, the name of our company is upyourservice.com. Up your service. Dot com. And so if people go to the website, they'll be able to find the entire first section of the book, which you can download for free. You'll find a lot of video clips. You'll find our blog. You'll find a library with more than 200 articles. You can also find me on YouTube, where we've got over 200 video clips of conferences that I've done and speeches and interviews. This one, for example, will be coming up on YouTube soon. And all of these materials are made available in the world to uplift the spirit of service, the practice of service and the quality of service everywhere in the world. Yeah, I uh, sometimes I I mention your motto to the flight attendants, and uh, it, it's like a penny drops. It kind of you can see it. <laughs> very, very, good. very good. Very, very powerful. Excellent. So thanks everybody for joining the uh, Be Empowered Show. I'm your host Graham Hopkins. Before we go. I was wondering if I could ask you guys to do me a favor, and that is to leave a review on iTunes because this is a, a new show and we'd like to up the, um, the rating so that this important message is going out to uh, many people. We've been very fortunate in the first week. We've had some, uh, some great guests like uh, Ron. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about the concepts that Ron and I have shared today, like feeling more connected, um, being in the flow, uh, the subject of service, it's all there in my um, book that you can go to Amazon and download the manifesto of your inspirational mind or you can go to my website www.beingpoweredgroup.com and download a free ebook which is called Know Your True Value and Worth. So nice. on behalf of Ron Kaufman and your host, Graham Hopkins, we wish every one of you a wonderful future of freedom, peace, abundance, and service to each other. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Be Empowered podcast. For more on regaining your power by bridging that gap between who you think you are right now and who you really are, go to www.beempoweredgroup.com and enter your name and email address to receive a free ebook and get notified of any upcoming podcasts. Remember, when you know and feel connected to your spiritual mind, you master your world. Changing your energy transforms.